Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com, another great presentation today. Um, again, my name is Pramil Charath, I'm a program director in internal medicine residency program, transitional residency program and uh, associate professor of medicine to large medical school. We've been doing a series of lectures on endocrinology, right? We covered the posterior pituitary and um, during the anterior pituitary and a very, very important hormone. We've been going over a lot of lectures on thyroid hormone. Today is a great topic again, um, I am here on induced thyroid disorders, okay? So when I, even if when I say am amiodrone induced thyroid disorders. Remember, we're going to talk about amiodrone induced thyrotoxicosis today and the other thing we're going to talk tomorrow, okay? So let's start our um, uh, presentation today. The first thing we need to know is a little bit about the structure, okay? Structure of the thyroid hormones and then we're going to talk about the um, the amiodrone itself So and see what is the similarity up here. So if you look at T4, you got um, in the tyrosine residues like uh, four atoms of vitamins are attached okay that is called t4 over here in t3 if you look at it only three atoms of iodine is attached and this is in the outer ring that is the t3 when you look at the reverse t3 you have again um, three iodine atoms are attached to tyrosine radius but this is in the inner ring that is the difference okay here is the outer ring and this is one inner ring remember that now what is the structure about Amiodrone. What does it make it so special? If you look at amiodrone, you got a benzofurane derivative and you got two atoms of iodine per molecule. Okay, so that is what amiodrone is pretty much. If you look at amiodrone, it's like it contains lots and lots of iodine. Okay, if you take like almost like 38, 39, I would even say like 40% of it is like iodine. So that is what the problem is. Let's say if somebody give you like amiodrone 200 milligram tablet, that's like the normal tablet, right? 75 milligram is iodine. Rema imagine how much iodine is right there, okay? Remember that. So introduction is a benzofurane derivative. Remember the half-life. Have you ever seen a drug with such a long half-life? Three months? I haven't done anything recently. So Hugh, if you give it to the system, it's going to stay there for a long, long time, okay? So, and uh, two to twelve percent of chronic amiodarone therapy can have complications, especially the people where the countries where it's like iodine deficiency. Okay, and then again, we talked about like I mean, don't get confused. Sometimes we think, um, you know, all these things things happen when we start the amiodarone, but it's not the case. Most of the time, or like sometimes it'll be like four weeks, sometimes like four years. So it's a long latent period, okay? So it's not like, you know, you think, oh, I started the amiodarone and this happened, but it take a long time to develop. And then in liver and adipose tissue, that's where you usually got to stay there. And then sometimes, I mean, in the, not sometimes, total iodine storage in the body can increase up to like nine months. So we're talking a long, long time, my friends, okay? Remember that. So now, Let's talk about the pathophysiology, like what does it do amiodarone? The first thing, we just have to go to the, I mean, to the anterior pituitary, okay? What happened to the anterior pituitary? T4 to T3, to convert it to T4 to T3, we need this type 1 and type 2 5D iodinase. Amiodarone inhibits that, okay? And then, what happens over here? You got this wolf Tchaikov effect. What happens when we take iodine, like lots of iodine, body, there's a mechanism for body to protect it. Okay, so they control the iodine kind of movement, trying to block the iodine for the first two weeks. And that is what Wolchaikov effect. So going to be here because it will be taking large number, I mean large parts of iodine, okay. And then when you come up here, it blocks the T4 entry into the cell. And uh, it also in the liver, it blocks the conversion from T4 to T3. Um, so type 1 and 2, 5, the iodine is again inhibited. Okay, so remember that. So we, I mean, again, one organ is clearly we have to be very careful is about the heart. So how does it work effect on the heart? We have to know you got direct T3 antagonism by a metabolic product of amiodarone, which is called a decethyl amiodarone. That's where a lot of cardiac complications you can have. Okay. Now let's look at there's two types of amiodarone in those thyrotoxicosis you need to know. One is type one and the other one is type two. Okay. So, when you talk about the type 1, you got the first one, let's see what's the difference in the, we have to know the difference because the management is different. So, when you talk about type 1, latent or pre-existing thyroid disease, in type 2, there is previously normal thyroid, okay? And the next one, increase, this is increased hormone synthesis, but here is like a destructive thyroiditis, another key point. Okay, now, this, I mean, uh, protracted 
and this is kind of like a transient. This lasts only like a, a few weeks. Multinodal diffuse goiter when you palpate. Here it could be normal or small goiter might be seen. And then radio, when you give radioactive uptake, normal or high, here radioactive iodine is decreased. Okay, and very, very key important points. Onset after starting amiron, short like three months. And this is one onset after starting long, like a long later period, like 30 months. Okay. And then thyroid autoantibody is positive, especially due to Graves' disease over here. Here, thyroid antibody is negative. And then IL-6 is normal or slightly high. Here, extremely high IL-6 in type 2. Very important point again. Doppler, another important increased vascularity in type 1. And there is no abs, I mean, there's absent vascularity in type 2. And the last one, spontaneous remission, no. I mean, does not like type 1 does not go into spontaneous remission, type 2 goes into spontaneous remission. And the last one, like one more point subsequent hypothyroidism in type 1, there is no subsequent hypothyroidism. In type 2, there is uh, hypothyroidism. Okay, so very, very important topic up here. The main thing we need to know, I think I would say, increase hormone synthesis over here, and here is like a destructive thyroiditis. Okay. And uh, you, you can check the IL-6 level, it'll be slightly high, but the other one is like extremely high. Okay, now let's look at the clinical picture. First one, we have to go and look at the heart. We already know there's direct three antagonism on the heart. There is because of the decethyl amiodarone. So cardiac wise, let's look at the cardiac complication, but they may not present it, it may be absent. So let me write here, may be absent, okay? Because of the you know intrinsic property of amiodarone on the heart, that's why like a lot of times you will see uh, cardiac manifestation go, it could be absent. Let's look at cardiac manifestation anyway. Sinus tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, and China and CHF. Let's look at the known cardiac manifestation. You got weight loss, tremor, muscle weakness, restlessness, enlarging goiter, and low grade fever is seen. Uh, lab. The TSH, if you look at a dramatic decrease in the TSH, and 3T34 is increased. Okay, so we can almost like remember IL6 is another important thing. So we'll check IL6 to make sure to differentiate between type 1 and type 2. In type 2, IL6 is like extremely high. So let's order IL6 also. I'll write IL6 to differentiate between type 1 and type 2. Very important point. Okay, now again, treatment is different for type 1 and type 2. The thing you need to know type 1, you give a mild, you can thalidomide, I mean thionamide, I'm sorry, thionamide, okay. And methimazole and PTU, you can give a mild. If it is moderate, you can give, um, you stop the amiodarone. Only in, if you moderate severe, then you have to stop amiodarone. And then you can give thionamide, potassium perchlorate or lithium can be done. If they, all of this kind of resistance are not working, then you have to go thyroidectomy. But if you look at type 2, you diagnose type 2, you start with the glucocorticoid, and then if there's no improvement, you know, and then you can do the thyroidectomy. So these are the very, very important topic right here. So remember, let's go back and uh, swatch our diagram like one more time. Make sure you know the structure, uh, T4, T3, and reverse T3. And then look at our amiodarone, look at two, two iodine molecules attached. And huge amount of iodine, almost like 35 to 40 percent, each tablet is contained iodine. It's very huge. And then remember, it can stay in the system for like um, in the half, I mean, you know, up to even like nine months. And the liver and adipose tissue, that's where usually amiodarone end up staying there. But the half-life would say like um, close to like 50 to 100 days. And then here, remember the in the posterior, I mean anterior pituitary, T4 to T3 conversion, inhibit the enzyme, the type 1 and 2, type 1 and type 2 deiodinase, and remember the wolf type of effect, okay? Because the nice and normal, because when you have large amount of iodine, what you try to block it to keep the balance for the first two weeks, that's what. After two weeks, everything go crazy. And then you got block uh, T4 entry into the cell. Again, T4, T3 inhibition over here, and direct antagonism on the heart by T3. 
by the mechanism desethyl amiodarone, which is a metabolic product of amiodarone. Now, remember, you have to differentiate between type 1 and type 2. So, let's look at this is again pre existing thyroid disease, my friend. Here, you got previously normal, and then you got increased hormone synthesis, and type 2 is pretty much a destructive thyroiditis. Okay. Here, if you look at radioactive iodine uptake, is normal. This is probably like decreased right here. And again, um, the thyroid auto antibody is going to be positive in type 1 due to Graves. The other one is going to be absent. And the most important thing in type 2, IL 6. Okay, and the other important thing I would say also the um, Doppler. There's going to be increased vascularity here. Okay, very, very important. Here, absent vascularity. Another important point. Now, cardiac manifestation could be absent because of the amiodarone has some intrinsic uh, activities on the heart. So we try to um, um, mask those symptoms first. Known cardiac, we got the symptoms right here. Labs TSH extremely low. Um, uh, TSH, free T3 for, and T4 increase. Don't forget to check IL-6 because we need to make sure is it differentiate between type 1 and type 2. The treatment is different. And this type 1, mainly you just give uh, thionamides. And then if it uh, moderate, you can give thionamide and per potassium perchlorate and or lithium. And if resistant, you still go with the uh, final treatment is like thyroidectomy. Type 2, you start with the glucocorticoids. And if it is resistant, you can do thyroidectomy. Thank you for watching, my friends. We'll be back with another presentation uh, soon. Please subscribe to your channel. Thank you again.